There have been numerous Switch 2 leaks recently, some of which fundamentally alter the narrative surrounding 4K gaming on the Switch. And I'd want to start with the first leak, which is some fresh information about the Switch 2's chip. The Switch 2 has long been reported to include NVIDIA's forthcoming T239 chip. The T239 is said to be a scaled-down version of NVIDIA's T34 portal chip, with a surface area 23% greater than the Xbox Series X and already utilized in robotics and the automotive industry. Now, Digital Foundry has produced a full analysis detailing every single detail they discovered regarding the Switch 2's probable chip, which I highly recommend you read. It is quite thorough, so I'll only cover the highlights here. According to Nate the Hate, a source told him that the Switch 2 would contain Dellus 3.1. More precisely, it will lack frame generation, which can significantly increase frame rates by utilizing AI to generate in-between frames. However, it will retain several DLSS3 components, notably the picture up scale, potentially enabling 4K images. This new GP, you will also have 1,546 CUD cores, which is 24% fewer than an RTX 2050, why am I bringing up the ERTX 250? That's because the T239 specifications, which include a 102 GB per second memory bandwidth, are very close to the ERTX 2050 in terms of total performance. According to the findings of Digital Foundry, they even tested a few games on the ERTX 2050, which, while being a 20 series card, is based on NVIDIA's latest Amper architecture, just like the 30 series. To summarize, when playing Death Stranding in 4K resolution, the RTX 2050 achieved an average frame rate of 35 frames per second. Even when the resolution was reduced to 720p and the LSS was enabled, 2050 couldn't push much more than 60. What's crucial to note here is that the ARTX 2050 is a mobile GPU, not a desktop GPU, and that, because of its limited 4GB of VRAM, it couldn't even run Matrix Awakens, which the Switch 2 reportedly could, according to various sources. Overall, this is the most accurate representation of the Switch 2's performance. More specifically, current-gen tripe titles may be able to run, albeit at 720p resolution on low to medium settings, and then upscaled to 4K resolution using DLSS. Although 4K may be possible with the LSS upscaling from a 720p image will almost certainly result in a soft output. But do you know what isn't 4K? Wallpapers are now in version 1.1. Our most significant upgrade to date is now available. With it, you can now download the full quality 8K version of our wallpapers, which you can then transfer to your tablet, laptop, or even desktop. These look incredibly amazing on larger devices and being in 8K means you can enjoy them regardless of screen size or quality. We've also added a lovely new welcome screen before you sign in, as well as a new menu button with choices to subscribe right from there and become a creator. On top of that, we have a slew of other graphic tweaks and enhancements. To commemorate the release of version 1.1, here are 10 six-month full access codes. Now, let's get back to the Switch 2's resolution. I can't say I'm not occasionally disappointed. I was hopeful that Nintendo would finally be able to provide us with some sharp 4K images when docked and playing AAA titles, but that does not appear to be the situation here. Sure, certain simpler titles, such as future editions of Mario or Zelda, may run at 1440p and then upscale to 4K using Deal Stew, making them appear acceptable on a 4K TV. According to your gamer, an upgraded version of The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild was even shown to a select few developers at Gamescom, and it operated at a 4K resolution in 60 frames per second, with nearly no load times. This means that first-party Nintendo games might theoretically support 4K resolutions at 60 frames per second. Third-party titles may benefit from using the LS3. However, as previously stated, I expect those to have a more obvious clarity hit than first-party titles, because Nintendo's products are not only simpler in terms of graphics, but also considerably more optimized. What I'd like to see Nintendo do here is provide us with a dock with a dedicated GPU that connects to the Switch via Thunderbolt, or a proprietary connection, and then significantly improves its performance when docked. This has happened before with Bolt Eggpoo docks. In the past, we've done a few videos about them. Furthermore, certain handhelds, such as the Asus RG Lee, include an external GPU that can significantly improve performance when docked. In reality, 
you can connect a mobile RT X4090 to the ROG Ally using ASUS ROG XG Mobile Egg Poo. The biggest issue here is, of course, the expense. The XG Mobile Egg Poo costs roughly £2,200 in the UK. That is more than three times the cost of the Ally. And, given Nintendo's penchant for keeping pricing as cheap as possible, there's no way Nintendo will offer such a feature, let alone include it in the box. So in this case, AAA titles will likely see a visual hit when compared to the previous generation of 4K consoles like the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. Even considering that the Switch 2 will have DLSS and the new GPU and CPU architectures, in which case should we not expect to see any big AAA titles at all and instead see more first-party titles like we've seen on the Switch? As I said in our previous video, Nintendo has been in discussions with Activision Blizzard about bringing some of their titles to the next generation Switch. Call of Duty is included among these titles. What's more, Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby KK stated that the Switch 2's overall performance is comparable to that of the PS4 and Xbox One. Of course, the PS4 and Xbox One can play the latest Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, so the Switch 2's performance will undoubtedly be sufficient to run the most recent Call of Duty. However, I believe that a Switch 2 will be more powerful than the PS4 and Xbox One due to its much more current design and support for things like the LSS, which I described earlier in the video. I mean, I adore my Switch. I enjoy taking it with me when I travel. I don't mind the lower performance when compared to my S5. What I don't like about my Switch is that it doesn't offer a lot of game selections. And, to be honest, I believe we will not only because a Switch 2 provides significantly improved performance, but also because major publishers such as Activision Blizzard appear to be genuinely considering bringing their titles to the Switch. And this is what I'm most looking forward to.